Hello everybody and welcome back to On Point HQ, uh, the channel that guarantees one fail morale test every viewing. Well, I hope everyone's okay. Um, so what have I been up to? I've been tidying, um, specifically tidying my kitchen cupboards. Um, that will become relevant in a, a little while. I've lived in this flat now for about ooh, eight, eight years and I've still got boxes and bags of stuff out the way in my kitchen cupboards. Uh, so how's that relevant? Well, one of those things located in my kitchen cupboards is a whacking great big pile of White Dwarf magazines that I haven't looked at for a good long while. So what I thought I'd do today is um, a bit of a nostalgia trip, a bit of a, a bit of a trip down memory lane um, to the early 90s and White Dwarf. Now this, I would like to do the, the very very first issue of White Dwarf that I ever got, um, which was actually the one before this. I think this is the second edition that I ever bought. Um, that was that was a fantastic edition. It had um, orcs and Eldar in all their glory on the front. There was striking scorpions and orcs in red power armor and axes and stuff. And I also had an excellent battle report between uh, the Blood Angels and the Eldar. Um, Andy, James, Andy Chambers and Jervis Johnson in one of the very very many battle reports that they um they took part in in the early 90s um now while i found this like i said this is the second the second edition i ever bought not the first i'm gonna have a i'm gonna track down that first because that i'll bring back some happy memories talk about gaming salad days um but i will i will find that and i will i may even do another video about my very first uh episode uh, game, copy of white dwarf but this is about the second copy I ever bought. In fact, interestingly, I also found the last ever one I bought, um, oddly enough, from September 2009. So 10 years ago, near, almost to the month. Um, I actually picked this up on a, a holiday in North Wales. Uh, well, it wasn't actually a holiday, it was more of a death march um, to the worst hotel I've ever stayed in in my entire life. It also involved a strange trip back to the 1970s. It was surreal and bizarre and quite frankly I'd rather not think about it anymore. But the reason I bought that was I was wandering, walking uh, through W.H. Smith's, saw this and I saw Space Hulk. They're remaking Space Hulk, one of my all-time favourite games from James Workshop. Um, and a week later I had a brand new copy of Space Hulk um, in my hands. In fact, a future video coming up is it's only taken me 10 years, but 10 years on, I'm starting to paint my Space Hulk uh, figures from 2009. But more of that in a future video. Right, let's get rid of that. So here we have, now this is this is White Dwarf 139 and it's from July 1991. So 28 years ago. Blimey, I am, I am showing my age and I'm feeling pretty old right now. But let's crack on. So. 139, the princely sum of one pounds and 95 pence. And I've just noticed someone scribbled red ink all over the cop over, over the front of this. I, I am, I have no words. I shall track down whoever's done this and re-educate them. Um, all right, anyway, moving on. So 139 from July, 1991 contents. Oh, here we go. Here's the thing. Um, the Warhammer 40,000 compilation. Now this, this, this White Dwarf was out when uh, we were still playing Rogue Trader, uh, the very, very strange incarnation of 40K, uh, the original 40K. Uh, and the compilation was just that. It was a, um, a bunch of articles, rules, uh, army list, background, yada, 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 um, that had been released in White Dwarf and then compiled into a book called the 40, Warhammer 40,000 compilation. Now in our gaming group we had the um, main 40k rules, we had this and we also had chapter approved, We're very similar to this, new rules, I think there was rules in there for Eldar Pirates, I, I, yeah just as confused now as I was back then, um, yeah but I think there was another book as well, um, I, I can't really remember what it was, uh, I could be wrong but if, if you know what it was, if there, if there was a third book in the in the 40k um, set back in the late 80s early 90s please let me know in the comments below i'll be very interested to remember so that's the warhammer 40,000 compilation 
So here we go, we're on to the content. So the cover is, um, have a look, do, do, do. Space Fleet. I, Space Fleet. Was Space Fleet the, the forerunner of, um, is it Battle Fleet or Battlefield Gothic? Battlefleet Gothic? Was that the forerunner of that? Again, I could be wrong. Uh, back in the day, I didn't, the only games I really played back in when these were out was, um, was 40k um, Confrontation. That was, they were our games of choice back in the early 90s. Um, oh, and Space Hulk. Um, but yeah, it, that, I think it was the first the first version of Battlefleet Gothic. Um, I think, just, just looking at the, the, the contents here, this takes, Space Fleet takes up a whacking great portion of this magazine. I don't remember so much being dedicated to one game in one mag, but we'll get to that in a bit. So here we are, gaming events from around the UK. And I've just noticed how few stores there are. Blimey. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine stores in the north where I'm from. Ah, Liverpool, Lord Street. My, uh, my nearest Games Workshop store back in the day. It isn't these days, um, but that was my, my go-to store whenever I wanted to go and spend my hard-earned pocket money on weird space marines. Um, but yeah, it'd be interesting to, to see uh, how many stores there are now compared to compared to what there was back in 91. Um, in America, there's one, two, three, four, five, seven in the US and Canada. Wow. This is... This is taking me back, it really is. Oh, Citadel News. What do we have here? Da -da. Flame and Marauder on the move. Flame Publications, don't really remember them. Um, Spanish Golden Demon. Ah, Mighty Warriors. Somebody was talking about this the other week, Mighty Warriors, and I, I for the life of me, could not remember what it was. Um, I, and I still don't. Um, I think it was like some kind of basic introduction to fantasy battle that ah, ah, yeah it says here uh, 20 scaven 12 humans and four character models card floor plans counters simple rules and a cunning box with combat tray that rings a bell it really does uh, i think it, yeah i think it was like a really really basic introduction to to gaming if i'm if i'm if i remember correctly um oh plans are now underway for games day 1991 uh, oh, okay, yeah, because they just had to get, they just had the Golden Demon Awards in 1991. It'll be held in Derby on the 21st of September 1991. So if you've got yourself access to a time machine, um, I'd, I'd fully recommend going back to Games Day um, 2001. It sounds spectacular. Ah, now we're talking Advanced Hero Quest. Almost nearing completion is the new supplement for Advanced Hero Quest, currently known as Terror in the Dark. Uh, there's also a, a special five-part quest for the Lishmaster. Um, I, I used to play Advanced Hero Quest. It was a fantastic game. Um, if you're a, a sad, lonely nerd like me back in the early 90s, um, you could solo game um, with Advanced Hero Quest. Uh, I can't help but feel I'll be telling that to some kind of psychologist in the near future. Um, but Advanced Hero Quest is actually going for quite a bundle on eBay. Um, they're quite, quite rare copies of Advanced Hero Quest these days. I'd love to pick up a copy that and the original hero quest they were they were some proper games I like some of the crap you've got these days these were these were fantastic board games but uh, i actually think there's yeah there's um, an advanced hero quest article in this very magazine uncanny right let's get helmet so here we have the golden demon awards 1991 um and there is what looks like an early version of man of war with nigel stillman there's a name from the past um space fleet warhammer fantasy battle uh ye be missed ye be missed um massive game of mighty empires now we used to play that back at our, our games club we had a, a, a huge huge map of mighty empires um from what i remember it was painfully dull um but that's just me i was 12 13 at the time and i had the attention span of a gnat um there seems to be massive games of 40k the speed painting competition as was uh mandatory back in those days with the hexagonal paint pots uh, if, you, if anyone's got any of those left um i'd love to see them because they i used to love those they were, they were brilliant um, a, a lot better than the these ones we got these days really don't like them at all um but the hexagonal ones 
nostalgic. They really were. Okay, right, we're on to Space Fleet. Now, I'm, I'm not really going to look at this, because one, I don't really remember the game. Um, and I never played it. Um, but why would they dedicate so much to to a game? I mean, it's, it's only just come out, and th this is the this is the uh, a supplement for it um you've got reference charts we've got uh, background we've got fluff more reference charts more background some really weird uh, early 90s and 40k art can't go wrong with some of that counters uh again more more cards very reminiscent of space marine uh, that card remember the old epic uh, 40k back in the day and you had your, your unit cards very much set out like that. Um, squadrons, new rules, uh, more new rules, weapons, weapons, ships. Oh, painting your spaceships by Mike McVeigh. There's a name, another name from the past. Blimey, this is a. There's some really weird pictures. Some looks like Eldar pirates. They, wow, that's a strange, strange photograph right there. Um, yeah, look, look at that. That's that's a good 32 pages almost dedicated to one game and a game that I don't really remember. This is this is quite bizarre. So here we have the, the grand opening, Coventry, 6th of July, um, with your, your mandatory discount, um, discount vouchers. And there we go, Space Hulk, Advanced Hero Quest, Deathwing. Uh, this is really, this is really taking me back. This is fantastic. Buy two blister packs at three ninety nine or over and get one three ninety nine blister pack completely free. Fantastic! Oh wow, Marauder miniatures. And um, now these these were always springing up in in White Dwarf. And they were they were uh, they weren't Citadel miniatures. They were Marauder miniatures, as the as the name suggests. Um, and these these were in for for many years actually. Uh, and they used to complement uh, Warhammer Fantasy Battle um, really, really quite well. My God, look at that. Banners for you to cut out and paint in horrifically gaudy colours and essentially ruin your magazine. Um, which is what I did plenty of. Um, I'm not going to deny that. Here again, more. An Orc Hero on a War Wyvern and an Orc Ard Boys uh, banner. Naznab. Yeah, these are these are proper classic looking orcs and goblin spider riders, goblin shamans. Orc and goblin special deal. And pretty cheap as well. <laughs> 40 goblins plus two giant spider riders, £37. What would £37 get you these days? Um, not very far, I'm willing to guess. Uh, that's just me and my psychic skills. Um, or for 10 boar riders, 5 black orcs and a war with them, plus a free chariot, £42. Wow. That's Marauder Miniatures for you. Oh, John Blanche. Bit of Blanjitsu. Um, I've mentioned in a previous a previous video, I I love John Blanche's work. He, he For, for me, uh, John Blanche is the, is the epitome of uh, 40k artwork. Um, and what, what do we have here? We have a reaver titan fighting looks like a, a chaos warlord titan with a dog face i think this was used in the um the chaos supplement for space marine uh, that 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 looks really familiar and land raiders when they look like land raiders uh, here we have the emperor's gate yeah and some character pieces so we got a uh, inquisitor draco um, Obis Bar and the Harlequin Man from the um, the books, which are Chaos Child and Inquisitor, if I'm thinking correctly. Uh, I think I've only got, I've got Chaos Child. Uh, the one with the Inquisitor is it Me Lindy or May Lindy? Um, and the Ultramarine and the Squat. Yeah, Squats were a thing back then. Um, yeah, John Blanche's artwork. Yeah, absolutely take me back. Really, they just they just epitomise 40k for me. Uh, White Dwarf subscription, twenty pounds for a year subscription. Again, what would twenty pounds get you these days? Not very far. Aha! Now we're on to forty k. Warhammer forty thousand Rogue Trader, possibly my all-time favourite version of forty k. But I only played two. Um, it's not a hard choice. 
So here we are, Andy Chambers is building a new um, Blood Angels uh, Space Marine Army. Ah, yeah, I was right. Uh, last one's White Dwarf, they were fighting the Eldar Alatok Craft World, that Craft World Army in that battle report. So the memory's still there. Um, given how little I know about 40k these days, um, this is probably going to make more sense to me than, than anything. Um, and what we've got is Andy Chambers talking about the, the composition, how he's put it together, the actual um, army list. I'll go through that in a second. And then we've got Tim Prow on about how to paint Blood Angels. Yeah, classic 40k Marines. Look at the flamer. Wow. It looks like it looks like a blowtorch. And you got some old style bolters and old style missile launchers. Oh, look at these. Devastators. Do Devastators still have blue helmets these days? Um, I don't know. These are these are the, the, the old Beaky Marines. Um, the Rogue Trader box. We got 30 Marines with a princely sum of about 12 quid. Uh, I actually uh, I actually had a box of that. This is just reminding me. Um, what it says here about the um, the battle report between the Blood Angels and the Eldar. That very Christmas, that following December, I asked my parents to, to for Christmas. All I wanted was that Blood Angels army that Andy Andy Chambers used in that battle report, and I got it. I was a very happy chap that day um, when I woke up on Christmas morning and had me my very first 40k army. Which I proceeded to butcher over the next the next 12 months because I was really crap at painting back at those days. And yeah, it left a lot to be desired. Um, and even when I did use them, they were killed on a regular basis because I was pretty crappy at gaming as well. Uh, nothing much has moved on since that now. Now I'm a little bit older, a little bit wiser. Um, yeah, the army list, I said I'd mentioned that. So we've got a Space Marine Captain, a Lieutenant, a Librarian, a Chaplain, Medic five tech marines for 95 points a terminator squad a tactical squad a devastator squad another tactical squad an assault squad a thud gun who remembers thud guns thud with two d's thud guns uh, a land raider three rhinos a land speeder and two imperial bikes 2510 points means absolutely nothing these days um but i do like the way these are painted um, the be the beaky marines you can't go wrong with them you really can't they they're in some weird positions <laughs> they really are contorted in some strange strange positions um but oh old school terminators as well not exactly what you call them um, thematically posed um the uh assault cannon with a shield on it and um, yeah they're then Looking back, they really haven't stood the test of time when it comes to um, models. They look really dull, actually. Oh, here we have Captain Tycho. I imagine he's been redone these days, Captain Tycho. Um, again, not really my scene anymore. Don't really look at the products. But I can imagine, oh, well, anything's going to be better than that model, because that is, again, wow, that's pretty, pretty basic. But it was 1991, so let's move on. Ah, here we go. Uh, slight camera malfunction there but there we go a thud gun two d's um i knew i'd see one i actually had a thud gun um as part of my my christmas army that year and it was an absolute nightmare to put together i ended up using that uh, it's double side double epoxy and it stunk and it wouldn't stick together and mine didn't look like that mine was terrible yeah um so again, oh, oh, more more banners you can paint and ruin, um, which I more than likely did. I, I think I did anyway. Uh, oh, and Cambridge um, grand opening on July 20th. Liverpool has moved to a new location, Ball Street to Lord Street. Uh, again, that was, like I said earlier, that was my go-to workshop for a number of years. Um, always a pleasant time making a trip out of Liverpool with your, your, your parents or your, your friends to go on wander around a, uh, a games workshop and look at things i couldn't afford to buy uh yes okay and here we go advanced hero quest like i said before a fantastic game this one is all about treasure oh look at this monster type 
Uh, I think this is, this is to generate what what they would when you you killed something. Uh, you would roll a d12, and this would then determine what that particular beast was carrying that you just slain, and then what um what treasure you would pick up from it. Weird games workshop doing stuff for advanced hero. I know I know it was their game, um, but I can't I just can't, I can't get my head around it. I will have to track down a copy of it and get my uh, my buddies round for a bit of nostalgic advanced hero quest. I just I do remember it just being a really really fantastic enjoyable game, but again quite a lot quite of in depth um, magic items here. This is this is really good. I'm glad I found them actually. I guess some weird out. Aha ha! The mail order section. Um, this is going to be interesting. <laughs> oh, ho, ho. Space Marine Strike Force. Hands up, anyone that had a box of these. Uh, I did and they would not go together they the arm design was really strange they had these kind of nub nub things on the on the arms and the the idea was that you attach the the arms to these nubs and then attach the shoulder pads then you had to cut the um handle um from the bolter and attach that and they just wouldn't go together mine mine looked absolutely diabolical <laughs> they were just they were just terrible i just remember the yeah the cover the the marines are hard as nails on it they they look like proper badass marines um which is why everyone gets into marines when when they're 12 or 13 years old anyway isn't it because they're badass but yeah i had a box of these and again i use the same uh, two-part epoxy that i used to put my thud gun together i just remember them not going together very well um and again the poses aren't the best I just those arms wow I think I've just opened up some deep psychological scar from many years ago uh, oh here we go like I talked before the ubiquitous beaky marines um 30 marines for 12 quid um very very strangely dimensioned uh, but with some really gnarly looking weapons the bayonets on these weapons were really nasty looking they were sharp or they had chain bayonets um and the missile launchers were, were cool and the flamers looked like uh things you'd use fly spraying but if i ever got a chance to build another box of these again i definitely definitely would mark six marines um yeah I, the look of joy on my face on christmas morning when i opened up this was the first thing i opened and i again i was a happy chap that day uh Little did these, these, these guys know of the horror that was to await them at the hands of me and my gaudily painted paint schemes and badly applied transfers and it was just it was just a nightmare um but yeah so these these, these ones were, were the the strike force ones the the but the the body i uh, came in one piece the head the torso legs they were all metal the rest were plastic and for me would they stick together would they not stick together at all in the slightest so i don't even think about that again but then yeah if i ever pick up a box of those i would definitely do it, it it's it's a fantastic uh fantastic box set and i i had many great days putting together wow oh my <laughs> individual metal marines of the weirdest kind what on earth is going on here i had forgotten all about these these what are, what is this they all look sort of um hideously um i don't know hideously malformed they look a bit i don't know something they, they don't like put it this way they don't look like um marine superheroes or superhumans by any stretch of the imagination these weapons are i what is that that looks like that looks like bellows at last cannon what i i i am lost for words i actually had some of these in fact i had him hooded tabard and power sword when you do 12 or 13 you, you don't know what a hooded tabard is especially not on a space marine and he looks really angry he's like ah i got no I, I, chaplains my chaplain's not here my chaplain had a, had a, yeah there he is chaplain with the um the crozius and the plasma pistol that's the one i had 
tech marines i what is that that's an that's an oversized blow why have they all got tools just stupendously big massive wrenches big blow torches um medics with chain swords because you know when you when you need a limb amputated quickly you can't go better than a chainsaw let's be honest some of the oh librarians i had that's, that's my librarian there librarian scroll because he's just he's just wandering onto the battlefield clutching a scroll some of these are just bizarre really i i if you can find a link to these i i'm gonna have i am going to have nightmares about these tonight that are just terrifying go on some space fleet uh, ships I want to check out the prices i mean i don't really talk about games workshop prices as a matter of principle well, let's go back to 1991 and check out what we will be paying for um your space marines so your strike force box sets 15 pounds for one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven fifteen marines so a pound each um the rogue trader space marine box set yeah 11 9 12 quid for 30 marines and the weird strange assortment of oddities that were space marines back in these days were 3.99 for three i'm gonna have to go on ebay see if i can find some of these because I, I i need to own or paint some of these just to just to say that i have um i know i painted them back in back in the day but i i think i need to own some of these again traumatizing to look at them just just bizarre and here we this is ripped what on earth has happened to that oh well uh this is this is what i'm a fancy role play uh, which we used to do as well um back in the day it was something we used to do quite often at our local games club um but there you go so that is white dwarf 139 uh to 195 from july 1991 i'll tell you what that's been a real nostalgia trip um <laughs> going through that i've really enjoyed that it's it's really taken me back um it's just a shame most it was taken up by a game that i don't remember or ever played but now i might dig out some more in fact if you found this interesting pop a comment in the uh in the comments below and i might dig out another early white dwarf have a run through that as well um just want you to look at these again these if, if you can see some of these just just terrifying i don't have to turn that away right <laughs> okay i hope you enjoyed that again for me i enjoyed it it was a bit of um a bit of a, a trip down memory lane but thanks for watching and as always uh may your dice roll well and i'll catch you all in the next video bye bye for now